Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you want in the body and mind you want. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of freedom with food and your body, you're in the right place. Just a reminder that this podcast represents my own opinions. The content here should not be taken as medical advice. The content here is for educational and informational purposes only. Please consult your doctor or healthcare professional for any individual medical questions you may have. Hello, everyone. Hope you are all doing great. Today, I'm going to talk about ways to lose weight for good without feeling like you're on a diet. So this topic comes up a lot in conversations with my clients and even just with friends when we're talking about this and how feeling like you are on a diet actually can lead to self-sabotage of your goals. So this is a good topic to get a handle on and to figure out how to reach your goals without feeling like you're dieting. So for anyone who struggles with weight loss, disordered eating patterns like overeating, emotional eating, binge eating, yo-yo dieting, you know how it feels to go on a diet or to be on a diet. It typically feels pretty terrible most of the time. The things I hear often and the things I've honestly thought myself when trying to drop weight are things like, this is so miserable. I'm hungry all the time. I constantly feel like I'm missing out. I can't eat anything I want. I feel so restricted and deprived. This feels so not fun and I just feel miserable. This is why losing weight is so difficult. The belief is that to lose weight, that you must go on a diet and think all these things and feel all these awful feelings, but it is possible to lose weight and to lose it for good, by the way, in a much different way, in a way that feels exciting and not restrictive, feels enjoyable and feels doable. It is, I mean, I'm, I'm really telling you the truth, it is possible, so If this is something that you're interested in, keep listening because we're going to get a little deep into some of this, but the information that I'm giving here really can help get you into that space where you can reach some of your weight loss goals or your health goals or really any goals um, with not feeling like you're having to try so hard while being able to make it more enjoyable, simpler, easier, easier. So there are two ways or two methods I use to help my clients lose weight for good. I work with two types of people, um, typically two types of people, they can fall into two categories, wanting to lose weight or, and, or create a healthy, healthier relationship with food. So the first type of person wants to, and is ready to be precise to be measured, to be calculated. They want macro numbers to follow. They want information on specific foods and timing to help them lose weight in a very structured way. They enjoy that structure and the process. Other clients I work with come in at first and they might try something like this and it ends up backfiring because it takes too much time and too much energy They that they just currently don't have to give in whatever circumstances they have in life going on. So for them, the structure and the preciseness is just not a benefit. So for these clients, we go immediately into a different process or method. This is the second method. Um, we go into more of working with educating them on things like portion size, excuse me, portion sizes, what a typical day of food might look like to lose weight that includes the foods they enjoy. So really my point is this, it's important to understand what type of person and or type of method feels more okay to you. And and when I say type of person, this can come down to some personality things, but it also might be the kind of person you are right now in your immediate life, what the circumstances are around you and life are going on because sometimes that will help dictate um, which method might be more workable for you. 
So it's just really important to understand yourself, where you're at, and which way might feel better and true for you. Obviously, you can try both. One might work, and then you know to switch to the other one for a while. This is also where journaling on this topic or working with someone else to help you figure out which way might be the best to help you move quickly um, into losing your weight, just to kind of create that momentum that can be really important right now too. So working with someone can help assess what might be the best way for you at first, or if you want to do this on your own, do some journaling, looking to figure out what's the best way that I might have the most success at first, which is the best method. Choosing the best method for you really does make a difference between giving up and also being able to enjoy the process and staying consistent. So remember, consistency really is the one thing we want and need to practice for permanent weight loss, for permanent, for a permanent healthy relationship with food. I use the term weight loss a lot because that's a lot of where um, a lot of clients who I work with, that, that is their goals. But Really, when I say weight loss, this can apply, this really does apply to just a healthier relationship with food, your body, and yourself. So which method works for you then easily becomes part of your everyday routine and it's just not as big of a deal. Another part of the weight loss process and that most clients have success with is planning. If I can get clients planning their food ahead of time and doing a little pre-cooking for the week, it's pretty easy to get some of the weight off them. But for some clients, it's literally not possible. They don't have the time to meal prep or plan meals. They function more with kind of grabbing food on the fly, or I I call it a grab and go practice. And this works too. So helping these clients learn how to order from restaurants or even fast food places or things you can grab at the gas station. And by the way, you can still lose weight eating like this. The point is there are all kinds of possibilities to lose weight for good. So really finding that spirit of openness that you can lose weight for good with a lifestyle you enjoy is important. It's really understanding that there are different ways Um, to be able to hit your weight loss goal or find that freedom with food, your relationship with food, without having to do it in a very specific way, without having to feel confined or restricted. So I've watched a few clients in the past, and there are some people out there who seem to be able to go forever counting macros um, or something like that, like staying super structured. I've, I've seen a couple people who can go for years even, and that is great. I mean, there are those personalities out there that can stay super disciplined. It works for them. It actually makes them feel... I don't know, a little more relaxed because they know they they know exactly what they need to do. My concern with this is that for the most part and for most people, eventually they end up not wanting to do this for the rest of their lives. They don't want to count macros. They don't want to weigh food for the rest of their lives. So it can be a benefit to learn how to count macros and understand what foods contain what because it does teach you what foods work for you to maintain a weight loss or what macro numbers help you to lose weight. So it's like an education process, but eventually most people don't want to live this way forever. And by now, if you've been listening to me, you know my goal and my concern in helping people is sustainability. So even when my clients who really love planning and the macro counting and all that, I do eventually start moving them into more of an intuitive eating process. And then I focus with them on creating a healthier relationship with food. For the other group of clients who absolutely do not want to be um, counting macros or tracking food at all, we really just start out learning what foods work and what don't for their bodies for weight loss and or weight maintenance and what will be sustainable. The decision on which method to start out with really depends on the individual's wants, needs, past history with food, goals, lifestyle. Um, We end up assessing all that in the beginning to kind of figure out which, which method would be a good starting point. The goal for both types of clients or using both methods are always the same, to create a sustainable way of eating for health, weight loss, weight maintenance that is enjoyable, that's doable, that doesn't feel hard or difficult, and in a, in a way to where the client is not thinking about food all the time or having this restricted mentality of I can have this and I can't have that or this is a bad food and this is a good food, that black and white thinking. We, 
that we don't do any of that. It's about creating a relationship with food that is at ease, not stressful, and really just living in the body that you want and that feels good and it, that is healthy for you. That's the ultimate goal for both types of individ- individuals. So for both types of clients, we focus on figuring out how to lose weight with the foods that work for that individual and that they enjoy, how to still be able to eat these foods um, and continue to lose weight, where we can use the foods that are available to the client. I I help a fair amount of um, adolescents lose weight and get healthy, and often they are limited in the foods they can have um, because their parents are the ones who stock the fridge and pantry. So we really do have to work with some limitations on choices sometimes. So whether a client can cook at home and plan meals or you're more of a grab-and-go or like to eat out or whatever, to make a way of eating sustainable your way of eating needs to be tailored to you and your lifestyle. So let's talk a little bit about the stress of dieting. The stress of dieting comes from thinking things like, remember, thoughts, feelings, behavior. So when we have feelings like stress, there's always going to be thoughts involved. So the stress, the feeling comes from thinking things like, am I going to know what to do in a particular situation? Am I going to have to take a scale with me to, to the restaurant? What can and can't I eat when I eat out? I have no idea what to eat during the day that will give me weight loss. It's the unknown and that stress comes from not knowing what to do in specific situations. What I find is most people when they um, go on diets, that feeling that um, they almost always talk to me about is feeling confused. Uh, they may have had a real specific plan, certain foods they're supposed to eat or think they should be eating, but then they hear information on some other new fad diet or, or fasting or carnivore. You know, it's like, I know what I should be eating, but I'm not sure if I should be eating these foods in this particular situation and what about this situation or what about this gray area? And so there's just so much confusion and from the confusion, there is stress. And, you know, if we really get down to basics, the body actually already knows what it needs for health and staying at a healthy weight. So there's more, more of an idea of trying to tune in to what your body needs. So Things that, so what, okay, so wondering about things, can I have it or can I not have it? You know, the brain starts wondering, is this okay? Um, You know, or you have it and then you think maybe I shouldn't have had it or you eat the thing and the scales goes up a little the next day. So you're left wondering, maybe I should not have had that. Is that what made the scale go up? It's like all these real constant questions when we're dieting in our head. And it is so overwhelming and energy draining. And this confusion um, is is the sort of thinking that really does end up keeping us stuck. And And then where, or maybe where we're even at, if we've lost some weight, it becomes unsustainable. It's not sustainable anymore. It's too much. It's overwhelming. And feeling confused keeps us very stuck. And so all those thoughts are what keep us there. And when you feel confused and you're stuck, most of us just go back to our old ways of eating because that's what's comforting and we need comfort when we're feeling confused and feeling stressed and we go back and we tell ourselves, well, that didn't work for us and then we go back to eating our normal ways and we're right back to where we started even though we still really, really, really want to lose weight and want to change our relationship with food. That confusing part really can be completely dropped. Um, And often having a guide to help you make decisions and offer some wisdom around all these issues um, can be super helpful. I've personally used a coach before, therapist before, actually multiple times within my life. And every time it is so helpful because for me, it really does give a sense of having some support and um, having some help in making decisions. And you know, I talked a couple of podcasts back about decision fatigue, that's a real thing. And um, when we have too many decisions to make, we end up just giving up. And so having someone in your corner to help guide you through the process can be extremely helpful as well. And I'm not just saying that because that's what what I do here. Um, 
you know, but it really is something that I've seen that can be super beneficial. And if you're not wanting to go in that space of getting a coach or having someone um, to kind of, or a guide to help you through it, then doing a lot of journaling and reading on topics like these and what can be helpful for you is going to be really important as well. Cause then you're kind of learning to coach yourself and having that outside sort of objective opinion and support and encouragement can be, and and helping to make decisions can be really important. So I love that when clients um, who I work with, like I'm able to offer that to them, you know, that helping to make decisions, helping to coach, helping to guide, it doesn't mean that there's not experimentation or that there doesn't take some that it doesn't take some time. It, it's not like I can even tell my clients exactly and perfectly all the time what's going to be the easiest and what's going to make them drop weight. But because I have a lot of experience in working with a lot of clients, um, you know, we can work together in partnership and uh, we're always able to figure out a lot of these things together. How to make losing weight feel doable, easier, simpler, When you recognize and figure out weight loss does not need to be a miserable experience and that it actually can be a really enjoyable process of feeling more connected to yourself, more connected to your body, your relationship with food improves, it really is kind of amazing. You can drop the thoughts and feelings um, when you wake up in the morning, like this day is going to be so miserable because if I want to lose weight, it's just going to be so hard. I'm not going to be able to eat what I want to eat. And you know, I'm going to have to restrict myself. You, You get to drop all that. You get to go into a place where you think, I am eating things that serve me. I am figuring this out. I'm creating this very healthy, loving relationship with my body, with food, with myself. This is an amazing experience. And when you are experiencing these feelings, you are that less likely to go back to your old ways of eating. And that's just part of the trick here to keep it sustainable. This is this is how we create a sustainable relationship with food that keeps our weight exactly where we want it at, that helps us to feel incredibly healthy, gives us the energy we want, When losing the weight is so miserable and we tell ourselves, there's no way I'm going to be able to maintain this. Um, And if you're really that miserable, you are not going to be able to maintain the weight loss. What you want to do is figure out a way of eating that supports your body and feels so good to you that it's going to be a no-brainer once you're in maintenance. It's going to be no big deal to eat like that for the rest of your life. So I help my clients figure out how to listen to their own bodies and how to figure out what their bodies are telling them in a way that's easy and simple. Learning to listen to our bodies is a skill. It can be learned. This is not something like that where, well, we are kind of born with this, honestly, but then things happen and and we forget to do all this. But it is a skill that can be relearned. And when we're able to listen to our bodies, it really helps us drop the weight and be able to maintain the loss in a very sustainable way that's easy and simple. So learning how to listen to and trust our bodies, again, is an actual skill set. You can learn it. There is not one client of mine who has had the exact same protocol as another client to drop weight and keep it off or to create a healthier relationship with their bodies and with food. Um, I really believe that's why I can help people change and stay that way because each person has a specific protocol for them. Every client, every person is so different. We are all dealing with different nuanced circumstances around us, different body types, different food preferences, different health issues. And this way of doing things like finding out exactly what works for each individual and making it feel amazing and true and right and peaceful and at ease. It really does create a brand new healthy relationship with food, with your body, with yourself. And once that's established, it really is one of those things where people's lives open up because they figure out this really easy way to lose weight and keep it off. And now they have the time and energy that they were putting in to the food and the body and the weight loss and all the things they now have the time and energy to put it into other parts of their lives. They have time to start getting on to the other life goals and dreams. The focus can come off the food and weight. The focus can now go to other goals that they hold for themselves. 
Okay, so I always like to give very practical strategies um, for you to try. So here's your homework for the week. Grab a notebook and answer this question. What is the sentence that pops up in your head when you ask yourself, if I had to take my best guess, what method would work best for me and my lifestyle to lose the weight I want to lose and or create a healthier relationship with food in my body? Write down the sentence that comes to your mind first after asking yourself that question. This is your starting clue as to what methods you should pursue first, calculated, structured, and planned, or more of an intuitive style. So make a decision on which way to go. Doesn't mean you're going to use that method or strategy for the whole time, but for now, make a decision on which way to go and then use the one strategy discussed in the episode from either the intuitive method or the more structured method that you're willing to try today. And if you want to try intuitive, the intuitive style, one idea would be to wait to eat until you feel hunger. So this is your practical behavior, behavioral strategy if you're thinking you want to try the intuitive style. You wait to eat until you feel hunger. That means if you're used to eating three meals a day, but you are ready for breakfast and you're not hungry, you wouldn't eat then. You're going to wait until you're hungry. This is one way to tune into your body and begin to listen to it. Execute it today and for one full week. If you want to try the structured method, make a meal plan for breakfast for the next week and focus on following the plan. Don't do it for every meal. Don't like get all overboard here. Just do it for breakfast for one week. So this strategy will give you the feedback you need to begin to figure out which method might work better for you. This is the process to begin to figure out what's going to be comfortable for you and how to begin to lose weight for good and or create a healthier relationship with food without feeling like you're on a diet. Okay, so if you found anything useful from this episode, would you please take the time to subscribe to this podcast and also give a five-star review if you feel it's warranted. When you subscribe, you'll be sure to get the newest episode once they're released. This also helps me keep episodes rolling out and continuing to share information like this from this platform. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting this podcast and also for sharing this space with me for listening. And remember to thank your own self for being willing to consider making small changes in your life to get you closer to your goals and dreams. Also head over to my social media for more resources. You can find me on Instagram at Heinen Counseling and Coaching. Once there, feel free to DM me or comment um, or on a post or um, ask any questions you have about anything, weight loss, wellness, optimizing health, nutrition, thought work, etc. I'll keep including questions in these podcasts. Also head over to my recipes only page at Peak Protein Recipes. Peak is spelled P-E-A-K. And um, that's where all my high protein recipes live. Lots of quick and easy ones. Really easy, tasty ways to get your protein intake in. And if you keep listening right now, you're going to get some more information on how my clients take a deeper dive on these topics with me through online programs and coaching. It's where you get the actual structured lessons, worksheets, journal prompts, support and coaching behind all the information I'm putting out there to lose your weight for good, improve your health, and live the life you've been dreaming about in the body you've been dreaming about. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And get in touch with questions on all things I offer, like online courses for overeating, weight loss, goal attainment, and also my coaching and counseling services. 